when we talk about atomic size we refer to the atomic radius so if i have my nucleus these are the orbitals suppose i have a two orbitals atom the distance between the center of the nucleus to the outermost electron is known as the atomic radius and that is what determines the atomic size and there are many other ways of visualizing this idea of atomic radius but i'll be looking in at this one for now and we'll be considering the bohr's model of an atom uh, as we draw the models and see how the atomic radius varies as we go along the periods of the periodic table so so we've got seven periods 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 as we go from left to right from left to right what is the trend the change in the atomic radius and as we go down these 18 groups as we go from the left to right you would see that the atomic size keeps on decreasing and as you go from the top to the bottom the atomic size actually increases so the reason behind is it is a very good amazing concept called the effective nuclear charge which basically means how much is the nucleus able to attract the electron which we are considering in a multivalent a multivalent atom and so let us consider th this is our nucleus and we've got the first shell and this is our second shell this nucleus it's it has okay six protons for example i'm not drawing the neutrons right now which we are not really concerned about that because the nucleus has uh basically the neutrons and the protons and the protons are the ones which provide the charge to the nucleus because the neutrons are zero charge and as i keep on adding more and more protons the nuclear charge will keep on increasing and as i'm adding more and more protons and also adding more and more electrons because in a stable and a neutrally charged atom the number of protons and the number of electrons is the same consider this as a carbon atom with six protons and six electrons so in this the effective nuclear charge is equal to z minus s where z is the nuclear charge and s is the shielding constant so shielding is basically the obstruction of the charge that the nucleus is uh, having to attract the electron due to the presence of the core electrons so these are our valence electrons and we have something called the core electrons and these core electrons are blocking the force of the nucleus on the the outer electrons and that reduces the charge which they are effectively uh, experiencing the charge which is effectively acting on the outermost electron right here which we are considering the outermost this electron so the charge of the nucleus is plus 6 minus there are two electrons which each have minus one charge we are not considering this one that is the actual number the magnitude is minus 1.6 into 10 raised to the power 19 coulomb let's just consider as as minus 1 and plus 1 so as plus 4 the effective nuclear charge of the outermost electron in a carbon atom so i'm going to make a very important statement that is as the effective nuclear charge increases the radius of the atom decreases to understand this we would need to understand the coulomb's law which basically states that the force between two electrical charges two charges is proportional to the product of the charges divided by the distance between them squared the charges which we are considering is the nuclear charge in nucleus and the electron 
distance between them is r now we know that electrons charge is always going to be equal to this and it is same for all atoms while the nuclear charge varies with each atom what really matter is matters is the effective nuclear charge because not all the nuclear charge is acting on this electron the effective nuclear charge is what acts on the electron and so as it is increasing we can see from this very formula that this q1 q2 is like it's same it's for all the cases same the electron charge but as the q1 will increase that is as the effective nuclear charge increases the force increases between the two charges and the radius decreases so it's as simple as that this is like a relation which we could get from this formula and this is what is telling us how and why this thing is working so let's see as we are going along these uh, along this second period this is our lithium let the new this is the nucleus so this is the first orbital and this is our second orbital and this is three electrons and this is lithium i add one more electron and proton i get beryllium one more boron one more carbon still one more nitrogen one more oxygen then fluorine and one more neon so in all these this whole range it had two orbitals the orbitals did not increase they they remained the same number of orbitals but the effective nuclear charge increased so in case of lithium we had a uh, 3 minus 2 core electrons is equal to 1 in case of beryllium we had 4 uh, as the nuclear charge that is the atomic number minus we have got 2 core electrons that is again now this is equal to 2 every time in all these cases the core electrons the number of core electrons is equal to 2 in all these cases but the number of protons is increasing and therefore the nuclear charge is increasing in case of boron we have 5 minus 2 equals to 3 carbon 6 6 minus 2 is equal to 4 so as we go along the period the atomic radius is decreasing that is the atomic size is decreasing now let's find the variation in the atomic size in a group like this group 1 so in case of hydrogen you would see we have only one orbital lithium we have another orbital two orbitals sodium there is yet another orbital so genuinely as you see you you can see the radius will increase but you would also assume that because there are there is so huge amount of addition of protons and electrons there should be an increase in effective nuclear charge too that's what we would think as and but this fact that another orbital is being added each time we are going down this group is so profound that it is overpowering this assumption this intuition of ours and so the radius will increase let's clarify whether the what is the change in the effective nuclear charge so in case of hydrogen it is 1 minus 0 equals to 1 in case of lithium it is 3 minus 2 equals to 1 in case of so yeah i'm just applying this formula in case of sodium it is equal to 11 minus 10 equals to 1 you would see in this whole group 1 it is having that same constant effective nuclear charge this whole radius thing is being determined by the addition the number of orbital being added every time atomic size increases each time we go down down the group keeping in mind whatever we've learned till now let us see what the trend general trend in the periodic table is so you would see as we go from right here to here the atomic size 
keeps on decreasing. We would see that helium, helium is actually having the smallest atomic size and which is really true while this one right here has the largest atomic size. And yes, this is how we can understand the whole concept of atomic radius and how it keeps on uh, varying as we go along, uh, as we go through our periodic table.